Welcome back to Metaphor Math, and we're on to 7b um, in Chapter 1 of Rosenberg's Intro to Analysis. And we'll cover some more set theory here and some more uh, images of functions, images of sets under functions. In this problem, we're showing yet another, this time we're not showing a set uh, equality, actually, I should say. We're showing a set that the left-hand side set of it is a subset of the right-hand side set. So we're showing that um, an, the image of A intersect B under F is a subset of the image of A under F intersect the image of B under F. So let's do this. So, um, and I'm also going to show here why it's not true that the right-hand side is a subset of the left-hand side. That is, that the image of A under F intersect the image of the set B under F is a subset of the intersect the intersection of the two sets under F. Um, but let's first show that uh, this this subset uh, claim here that that F, the image of A and intersect B under F is a subset of the image of A under F intersect the, the, the image of B under F. So, like, like we've been doing before, we're going to say let Y be an F of A intersect B. So let Y be an a, uh, the image of A intersect B under F. Um, and remember, if we can, if we can show that every, if we can show that, uh, a y holding this property must also be in the right-hand side set, then we've shown that every y with this property must also be in the y, the, the right-hand side set, because and therefore showing that the left-hand side set is a subset of the right-hand side set, because every element in this left-hand side set has this property of being in that left-hand side set. So let's continue on with what this means. So if y is in the image of a intersect b under f, then that implies, that implies that there exists there exists an x and remember I'm using this I'm using this right here I'm using this um, definition of the image of a set under f and what it means to be in the image of a set under f under a function f so that means that there exists there exists an x in a intersect b such that f of x is equal to a, um, excuse me, not a, f of x is equal to y, the y that we are saying is in um, a intersect b, the image of a intersect b under f. And if x is in a intersect b, then by the definition of set intersection, that means that x is in a and x is in b. And if x is in a and x is in b, that implies that the image of x, the image of x under f is in A, and the image of x under f is in B. And that's that's the same as saying, that's the same as saying that there exists an x in A such that f of x is in A. And there exists an x in B such that f of x, or rather, not an f of x in A. I'm sorry, I messed that up there. That It means that we're saying that there exists an x in A such that f of x is equal f of x is equal to y f of x is equal to y, f of x is equal to y, and there also exists an x in b such that f of x is equal to y. And since there exists, and since if there exists an x in a such that f of x is equal to y, then that's the same as saying, since the set of all y such that there exists an x in a such that f of x is equal to y is the image of f under a, then that means that y is in f of a. And again, for the same reason over here, since there exists an x in b such that f of x is equal to y, and since the set of all y such that there exists an x in b such that f of x is equal to y is the same as the image of f under b, then that means that we can say and y is in f of b. And therefore, by the definition of set intersection, Therefore, y is in f of a intersects f of b. Now, 
we've we we're done essentially done we're quote unquote done but we're not quite done and i want to go as in i want to go as in we're not done for our purposes we want to investigate this and play around with this further and we want, if you're curious you might be wondering well why is it not true that the intersection of a under f the excuse me the, the image of a under f intersect the image of b under f is not a subset of this left hand side the, Im the image of a intersect b and let's go ahead and prove that down here we're going to prove we prove that f of a intersect f of b is not a subset is not a subset of f of a intersect b and to do that we're going to do a good old proof by contradiction so we're going to do we're going to prove okay so we're going to say suppose suppose that f of a intersect f of b is a subset of f of a intersect b and we're going to say okay so suppose this and if we suppose this and are able to arrive at a contradiction then we've shown that this statement that we've that we have supposed to be true can't possibly be true so suppose that this is true then that implies that if y is in f of a intersect f of b then y is also in f of a intersect b and let's think for a little bit what does it mean for y to be in f of a intersect f of b and let's draw a picture here to, to kind of see what this looks like for ourselves a little bit more easy uh more a little bit um in a more pictorial way, in a concrete way, I guess. Um, so if we have a, these, these pink sets are X and Y. And we're gonna say that A and B are here. Let's say that they do intersect here. So we're gonna say that this is A and then this is B. And then let's say that this is F of A, this set, here f of a this is f of a this set right here because remember the image of a set a under f is itself a set and we're going to say that right there that's f of b the image of the set b under f and we could have that there is an x here in A that's not necessarily in B, and an X here in B that's not necessarily in A, or in fact, in this case, it's not in A, and in this case, this X over here is not in B, and we could have that these map to some Y that's in the intersection of the image of, that's in the intersection of F of A and F of B. So here's our y. Let me just kind of go out here and say our y. Our y is in there. Our y is right there. These these are the maps under f. And this is our x1, say. And this is our x2, say. Okay, so using this to kind of help us along here, if y is in f of a intersect f of b, then that implies... That implies that there exists, well, first, first, before we say that, that implies that y is in f of a and y is in f of b. And this implies, now, we can say that there exists an x1 in a such that f of x1 is equal to y and, and there exists an x2 in B such that f of x2 is equal to y. Again, x1 and x2 don't have to be equal, and we've just shown here these these this x1 and this x2 map to the same y and f of a intersect f of b. They map to the same y and f of a intersect f of b, and just because they map to the same y doesn't mean that the 
the pre-image, that is to say, the pre-image of y, that is to say that the element that maps to y isn't the same. Um, so it, it doesn't necessarily have to be where x1 is equal to x2 or where. So because it still holds that this y is in f of a intersect f of b because it's true, going back to our definitions up here in white, it's it's true that there exists an x x in does it it's, there exists a general x or not a general x but there exists an x in b such that the the, f, the image of that x under f is equal to y where y is in f of a intersect f of b and it's true that there exists an x in a such the image of that x in a maps to our y so it's still true that y is in is in the intersection of f of a and f of b even though the images that x, or excuse, even though our x1 and x2 aren't equal. So, given all of this, we can, we can say, we can say the following. We can say the following. Suppose A intersect B is equal to the empty set. And when we say that uh, two sets, when two sets, uh, when we say that A intersect B equal the empty set, we, we can say that A and B are disjoint. Disjoint. Oop, I didn't spell that right. Disjoint. There we go. We can say that A and B are disjoint. So by saying that A and B are disjoint, this implies that there exists no there exists, there does not exist, the, 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 the symbol for this sometimes people use is the there exists symbol with a slash through it. Um, so there exists no x in A intersect B such that, and, well, not such that, just there exists no x in A intersect B because the intersection is empty. And if there exists no x in A intersect B, then this implies that f of y, there exists, there exists no x in A intersect B such that f of x is equal to y. Because there exists no x in A intersect B, then we can say right away, obviously, there can't possibly be an x in A intersect B such that the image of f of x is equal to y, since there was no x to begin with. So this implies that this implies that y is not in y is not in the image of a intersect b, and again we were able to 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 suppose this. Oh, and by the way, this 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 proves this is a contradiction. This is a contradiction because we supposed that we were supposing that this statement was true that that y is in f of a intersect b but and we we said well y is in f of a and y is in f of b so we said that y is in f of a intersect f of b and we were able to show that 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 y is not in f of a intersect b thus showing that these two sets that there exists that there could exist a y in f of a intersect f of b that is not that is not in f of a intersect b and we were able to, to, to make these assumptions. I know you're saying, well, you, you made an assumption here. That was the only reason why you were able to show that. But there's no reason why this couldn't hold true. The, this claim up here, this claim right here, this claim right here is saying, well, for all x in this left-hand side set, for all x in that left-hand side set, no matter what, in any situation, no matter what a and b are, whether they're just joint, whether they're to, um they, they're equal in any situation where A and B are two sets, any two general sets, that this state, statement must always hold for any two sets A and B. And I just found, I, I, you could say that I found a counterexample, where the counterexample is that A and B are disjoint. And that shows that this statement doesn't always hold. Um, and again, I was able to suppose that it were true, suppose that the statement were true, and then going along on that logic of that, of that this statement is true, that y is in f of a and y is in f of b, and that, that same y can't possibly be given this circumstance, even though that I'm being specific, it is it is still a, a specificity that is allowed for, 
for pro disproving this statement because we found we can say that this is a counterexample and we thus shown that this st statement doesn't hold for all possible cases.